Hello and welcome back to another episode of Transformation Education. This is the before and after photo of the hair that I'm working on today. So this was her before canvas. As you can see, I've got a nice inch of regrowth there and I've got some previous vivid colors that I'm gonna have to remove. So first thing that I'm going to do is a strand test to figure out how I'm gonna best remove these old colors. And what I have mixed up here is just a little bit of bleach and fivefold. And I just want to see whether that's going to shift the colour, just so that I can go in with a plan. This was only in the hair for about five minutes before it completely removed the remaining vivids in her hair. It's really good to just do a strand test so that you're going in with a plan and you know what's going to work. Now here I am mixing up the roots. I'm just doing a 1 to 2 ratio with some bleach and 20 vol. And I'm just going to apply that directly to her roots. I did rinse off that little strand test as well before I proceeded with this just to stop that from processing. You're about to see me add a plex in here, which is not actually Olaplex. I just like to put it in the Olaplex container because the application is a lot easier for me. But um, this is a product called Curaplex. Unfortunately, here in Australia, we have not been able to get hold of Olaplex number one, two or three for quite some time. But as soon as I can, I will certainly be going back to Olaplex. Sometimes when I have a larger regrowth like this, I will actually apply this off scalp. In this circumstance, I'm not going to because her hair is so uh, so fair. If she had like quite dark hair, then I would probably do an off scalp application. But what I'm doing here is just applying it like normal. I'm trying to move as quickly as I can, and then I'm going to use some foil to help me incubate and just get a bit more lift. I will show you that shortly. So in a minute you'll see me applying the foil. So this is how I'll usually do when I have quite a large regrowth. And you'll notice here I'm starting this incubation from the front because I started at the back when I was applying the on-scalp bleach. So this will just help out, help even out the processing time by kind of working in reverse. And it's just really good to do this because you can just be a bit more thorough. I'm really just going through everything with a fine tooth comb, spreading it open, making sure that I've got all those little bits and that I'm going like right to the edge of where the old um, previous bleach is. Once I finished applying the whole head like this, it processed for about 20 minutes. And now I'm going back through it and you can see that that is about ready. That's about as light as I really want it to be. So I've gone and mixed up another bowl of bleach. It's just bleach and 10 vol here. And I'm just swiping it through to kind of help me remove that line uh, where you can see the fresh regrowth transitions to the old color. I'm working really, really quickly here and this product is only going to be on her hair for like five minutes before I take her to the basin and rinse the whole lot out. If you've seen a few of my videos, you may notice that this is a color removal technique that I use quite often because it is more gentle. 
So I'll often do the bleaching, take my client back to the basin and then I'll just do a little bit more bleach at the sink when her hair's already wet so that it is diluting that product even more and it's just a really nice gentle way of doing it. And I really do just kind of work with the hair. So whatever color comes out, I'm just gonna kind of accept it and then I'm gonna work with the canvas that I have rather than stressing so much about trying to achieve uh, the perfect blank canvas. I'm more concerned about the condition of the hair and more willing to work with an uneven canvas if it means I can keep that condition of the hair a bit better. You can see me here just adding in some purple shampoo on those roots. I haven't yet washed that bleach bath out though. I'm just sort of going over the top of it. I didn't really apply bleach to her roots anyway. And now I'm adding in also some pink shampoo on those ends because it did throw a bit of like bluey green kind of tones. So I'm neutralizing this by adding in the pink shampoo here. So the purple shampoo has gone on the yellow parts of her hair and the pink shampoo is going on the green parts of her hair here. And you can see that that is really making quite a big difference there. I have bleached her as much as I can bleach her and now from here on out, all I can really do is just tone it a bit. I did end up putting a little bit of conditioner in there as well, just to help me kind of get my comb through there. Um, now I'm going to dry it off and get it ready for applying the vivids. You will notice there's a bit of a band in her hair from a previous colour that we haven't really corrected yet properly, um, to be honest, just because we didn't have the time and it really didn't phase her so much and I was prepared to just work with it. So we've just left that band in there for now and challenge accepted. <laughs> Now here is something that I've always wanted to show you, which is just how I mix up my greys. So I've started off with some conditioner in here. I've mixed in some of the Adore Black, which is just a direct dye, but it's black coloured. When you dilute this, you'll notice that it goes a little bit on the greeny side. So what I'm going to do now is just add in a little bit of violet, just to help you know, control that green. And I just add a little bit in as I go. It's very visual for me. I, I don't really measure anything. I just kind of eyeball it. So I'll do this until I find, until I see a color that I like. And I do prefer to error on the side of violet. No one's really gonna complain about their gray if it's a little bit too violety, but a lot of people will complain about their gray if it's a little bit on the green side. So you're better off erroring on the violet side with gray. Now the technique that I'm using here is something known as the swatch technique. And the idea is that you start off with a big bowl of color. You mix all of your color that you're going to need, like the whole quantity in this bowl, and you gradually add to it and you, as you change colors, working your way around the color wheel. So I am starting off with just like a nice aqua kind of green, a light green, and I'm gonna slowly add to it each section that I do and I do show you that as I go but yeah if you are interested maybe have a look on Instagram uh, the hashtag swatch technique to learn a little bit more about this and how it's done I'm fairly new to the technique but I'm always willing to give things a crack see how I just add a little bit of this and a little bit of that as I go there's no real method to my madness and most of the colors that I mix that is the way that I mix them I just kind of adjust it until I see a color that I like my first section that I'm going to be doing here is the gray which I have mixed up individually that's um, the only thing that's not really with the swatch technique but I had to put my own little spin on it you know how it is just being really really thorough with this application probably should have gloves on I do put gloves on later on, I believe, <laughs> but I really hate gloves. And I'm paying special attention to that band, just trying to be really thorough, even though I know that what I'm doing isn't going to cover it. I just want to try and cover it best I can. Now 
This section here is going to be the first section that I'm going to use the, be using the swatch technique. So this is my first color. You have to start with the lightest color if you want to do this swatch technique, obviously, so that you can deepen it and darken it as you mix up more. I hope that what I'm saying is making sense to you. Maybe once you watch kind of how I mix it and as I go, you may understand the swatch technique a little bit better. See me here again though, focusing on that band, just pushing a little bit more color into that band. Still by no means will it cover, but I'm doing everything I can to help. I believe the key to success with any of these kind of direct dyes is just a thorough application, like three times more thorough than your normal oxidizing tint application. That is the best way to help like avoid you getting a patchy result. Even I'm mean, even more meticulous when it comes to a particularly uneven canvas. So I've done both sides and now watch as I'm putting more color into the bowl and actually changing the formulation. So this is what the swatch technique is all about, is just making those subtle gradual changes as you move along in the sections. Now see how this is turning a little bit more blue than green? That's the point of the swatch technique. Sometimes I will just decide halfway through my application that it needs a little bit more blue. <laughs> I think I was just a little bit concerned that it was looking too similar. So I've just added in a little bit more blue here just to really distinguish so that they do look like two different colors. And on go the gloves. I don't know if you can see, but just behind me on my trolley, I do have a white spray bottle and that is my porosity equalizer. I should have mentioned that earlier, but I do always use a porosity equalizer before I do these colors. It just helps even out the porosity and I spray that in the wet hair before I blow dry it. And here again, you can see me really focusing on that band. Just slowed down this part because I want you to see that what I'm actually doing for a few of these sections is melting in some of my gray. It's just, it's a really subtle effect, but it does make a difference like to the overall result. So just every now and then I've just snuck in a little bit of a gray melt on those ends. Now I'm moving on to my third section of the swatch technique and I'm adding in more blue to change that formulation again.
once I'm finished painting a section, I like to just put a little bit of a twist in it. Just seems to hold everything together nicely. Now I have unfortunately run out of product. I did not mix up a, a, enough product to begin with. This is not ideal when you're doing the swatch technique, but unfortunately it is what it is. So now I've just got to try and get a similar kind of color to what was there and then try and adjust it. So I'm doing my best, but it's, it's not really going to be 100% the same. So I've gone from starting off with a greeny color to a bluey color, and now I'm going to try and make it a bit more purple. So I'm adding pink to my mixture. You can see how that's going to just make it a bit more purple. Just eyeballing it again, just having a look at it and mixing it until I see the color that I like. It's nice when you can start seeing all those colors side by side. I think it gives you a better idea of what the swatch technique actually looks like. Easier to envision. You can see me sneaking in a little bit of a grey tip here as well on this section, just for something different. And back over to the mixing station to mix up my final color. I'm just adding in a little bit more of that pink so that I can get a bit more of a pinky purple. Whereas the last one was kind of more of a blurple. <laughs> Have you noticed how many times my hand goes back to the bowl to reach for more color? I'm all about thorough saturation. Don't try and just pull the color down and just kind of rely on spreading it. You need to go back and reapply like fresh color from the bowl, lots of it. And here is the processing. It's quite nice to look at. It actually makes me very sad to wash these out sometimes. They're just so pretty. I'm rinsing this one out the same as I rinse all of my vivids, just with cold water only. No shampoo, I just give it a really, really thorough rinse. When I think I've got all the product out, I'll use my hands and give it a bit of a scrub. And if it bubbles, then I know that the product is still in there and I need to rinse it more. If the hair is in really, really bad shape, I may choose to give it a further treatment after this. But usually what I will do in that case is add a little bit of my Plex to the direct dye and that will help a lot. That way the whole time that your colour is processing it's also giving the hair a treatment as well. I'm 
might just mention uh, this is just a portable setup that I have put in my uh, just in my bathroom because I'm in the process of setting up a little home salon and eventually I do intend to put a basin in that corner over there where you can see the extension cord it's all coming together slowly but surely for me you might be able to see as I move the hair around that the first section that I did in the back which was the lightest color you can see the band most at the back there and I did kind of plan this accordingly because I knew that that band was going to cause an issue I thought I'd do it this way that way the hair that's on top the, are the darker colors that are closer to her face that's going to disguise that band a bit more if that makes sense in the finished result you can't even really see that band but you sure can see it at the moment <laughs> These are the kind of things that you really should discuss with your client though. Uh, we we were fully informed, you know, she was a part of the decision as well. We both knew what was going on and she was more than happy for me to do it, but it is something that I will discuss with my client in depth first because they may not be happy with that. They may want you to go and do a little bit of a little bit more color correcting. Communication is just really the key uh, with anything and realistic expectations. And here are the final results once it's all styled. So you really can't see that band very much at all unless you look for it. Quite remarkable. Here I am in just the natural lighting, taking some photos and some videos. This particular lighting is quite warm because I am against a brick wall and there's a lot of yellow. So I do just adjust that a little bit on my phone. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Transformation Education. If you would like to see any more tutorials on how I curl the hair or how I take and edit my photos, I may just drop a link for you down the bottom just so that you can see those videos. But again, thank you so much for watching this episode of Transformation Education and I really hope that's been helpful for you. If you would like to see more from me or more of my work, please follow me on Instagram. I am just called The Rainbow Hair Artist. Thank you for that and bye for now.